All right, so here we are back in the software. Uh, this is Softimage, by the way. It's similar to Maya, but um, I like it better for this sort of thing. So first thing was the um, just the overall shape and the placement of the elements to to bring those classic beauties um, into into life in 3D. So first thing would be the overall shape of the head. I think we want to get a little bit less real estate up on the top. We want to get rid of this sort of double visual area here. And we want to take the eyes down just a little bit and make them less buggy. So we're going to inset the eyes. And we're going to space the, uh, the elements of the face a little bit better. So we have the mouth kind of low on the face and distant from the nose. And then this shape here going, going narrow to, to wide is also hurting us. So think of the... Think of the face, or the elements of the face, as a triangle. So you've got eye to eye to mouth. It's a very narrow face. And remember, in those designs we were seeing, we are getting more of a feeling of a width. So we want to get that. And then the, the distance in between the eyes. This is um, be great for like a cartoony male, but not as appealing for a female. So if we're going for that classic beauty look, we want to spread them apart just a little bit. All right, and then we want to space the elements of the face so that the mouth and the nose and the eyes aren't too distant. And look at the triangle formed by the, the eyes and the mouth now. It's wider and tighter top to bottom. So we've increased the direction this way and decreased the direction uh, this way. Next we'll look at how the eyes are seated. Remember we talked about that. So here, very quickly as you go around to the three-quarter, you start to get a bulge coming out with those elements sort of supporting that bulge. And so to get rid of that, this is actually a really tricky thing, but you need to seat the eyes in. Get them as big as you can, but then the face needs to be flush enough to the front to be able to bring this stuff forward enough so you get some real estate on the front of the face so that when by the time you get around to the side the eyes aren't bugging out they're actually well seated into the face they're they're stuck inward into the face and you get a little bit of this cheek to brow um, silhouette uh, left next if we look at uh, the profile we look at the profile and let's compare this to the uh, classic beauties we were looking at let's see here that the eye isn't coming back so far like this. A good drawn eye from the profile is going to be more like this. The other thing is that the, the way the eye is seated in the face, uh, as soon as this lid comes up, we have, we're starting to expose the top of the eyeball, which is uh, not really appropriate for this kind of situation. We, we don't really want to start to expose this. When we go into a really wide lid, we still want it to be not coming this far, maybe maybe it'll hit here. And so what the difference is is that instead of um, instead of having the eyeball exposed on the top and then the lid coming up here, instead we're going to create like a little bit of a hood here so that the eyeball itself you never ever see that upper part of the eyeball. And by the time you get down here, you're already exposing the um, almost the lower half of it. So even in a, in a pretty exposed eye, it's seated more like this. And this is going to give us a, a, a more, um, more appealing and more graceful look. So you see that the eyeball itself, uh, these are all merged, so I don't know if this really is visible. But the eyeball itself, we're not seeing um, a lot of curvature bulging out. It's seated well into the face. Uh, so we can get a good view of it and we start to see the uh, silhouette of the face instead of a buggy eye. The lid, instead of the lid coming up here, it's, it's difficult to see where it stops, the lid itself, but the, I think the, the lid kind of stops right here, and then the, the brow begins. That's problematic too because you have a lot of uh, room left to expose the lid. See, the eyes already appear very open, but you have a lot of real estate left to open them even further. It's too much for a really graceful, beautiful look. So what you want to do is, by default, want to expose uh, you know, that much, and then you only have a little bit more to go. So there's only so wide-eyed she can get. You, know, you want to limit that real estate a little bit, so she has room to act, but it's not 
an enormous amount of room to act. And plus you can cheat this line upwards here. So the arrangement of features on the face, the, the spacing um, is different here because you've got this um, distance here and then the mouth and the nose are close together. So that's going to be more appealing, more like those classic beauties. Um, the nose is subdued visually. You notice that there are no hard edges to the nose. This is a little bit more soft than I would normally do, but I'm just trying to make the point. And you notice that the this line sort of gracefully flows down, turns a corner here, but never gets too sharp, and the brows don't sort of hang over. The nose has a graceful upturn. The lips, like I said, are treated um, a little bit realistically, but they've got a fullness to them. That sort of rose lips, they dip down. They have a fullness to them, but they don't look um, overly protruding. That's really important to get right, and it's really difficult to get right. You might find that you have to sit there and model a long time to get it. So in comparison, you see how these are sort of low on the face, and they appear uh, pulled and tense, and uh, there's an aging. You're feeling an age there with those lips, and so you want to get a rosy, puffy fullness to them. And it's great to get a little bit of angle in it. You could, you could do a more cartoony version, like I said, where instead of this sort of rose lip, graceful lines, uh, that you sort of straighten it out. It would be a little bit more like, uh, say, Mrs. Incredible from, um, from The Incredibles. But this is a good look as well. It's a little bit harder to rig. Uh, we talked about the, the neck to the, um, to the jaw connection. Instead of this distance here, and this big fat neck uh, feeling. Those are sort of more cohesive. And you see how much more graceful it is to, to get that chin and then to have it be close to this neck, which is which is nice and thin. For the ear, I just, uh, by the way, this is all, this isn't uh, my model. This is all, Travis, this is all your model, which is just um, uh, de-rezzed. And <clears throat> so first thing I do is de-rez the whole model so that it's easy to push the points around. And then I did reroute some things. Um, so I went from here to there, but it's all it's all based on your your um, geometry. Uh, the only thing that isn't is this ear. I just chopped the ear off another character and stuck it on because it takes a while and it's kind of tricky. But um, so for the ear, you know, you don't want this big hole. This kind of feels like an alien when you when they see the, the positioning of the ear and the shaping of the ear. All right, so if we go back to our um, our nice designs here, let's just see if we hit some of those um, aspects. So I just think this is a this is a great design, and let's let's look at some of the details on this and see see if we've gotten uh, close to it. So um, what you want to do is get to a similar angle and then just compare it. Maybe switch back and forth and see. All right, so we want the eyes to be well set and the cheek to come out about that far. And then come in, but not too far in, and then meet the, the rigid, rigid part of the chin coming down like that. All right, so kind of hit that. All right, next to the lips, they've got that fullness to them. Yeah, I'd say the lips are somewhat similar. Next is this crease in the eye. All these drawings, and of course this movie in general has a certain um, linearity to it. It's part of the design, which is fantastic. Now her face only has some of these hard edges, but one thing that is really common is you want to see this crease right here. And it's really common in models to uh, to have that be soft instead of a, a, a tight change. And so we want to see that in our model. And so that's why this is a hard edge right there. Okay, next we'll look at the profile, see how we did on that front. So remember that there's a certain... Um, age to this and like a sagginess to the way these elements are sort of poking out and sort of tugging downward. We want to get things kind of perky and so the nose is, is going upwards, things are lifted up and they aren't tugged out. Let's look at this uh, profile here of, uh, of Aurora. We have a, a high forehead or a long forehead and then a graceful switch into the nose, and the nose changes angles pretty aggressively. And then the nose um, is just a little scoop here. The lips come out. And then with Aurora, there's a definite break in between the, 
the mouth and the chin. She's got a somewhat prominent chin. And the eye doesn't uh, go too far back on the, on the profile. And the brow is wrapped around it nicely. So that's the arrangement of the features uh, of her on her and her profile. So we don't want to get the, uh, the eyes too far back like this. In the profile, the eye is kept here. So I've tried to follow that same uh, basic idea in the profile, which is um, uh, from Sleeping Beauty, which is sort of a highish forehead, and then a slight change in here, and then an aggressive angle change into the nose, a slight upturn on the nose, and then to keep the nose graphically um, muted, the, the shapes are round there. Um, the connection into the lip here is important. And so the lip starts a little bit further out than the cheek and the, the edge of this nose here. So this, this lip finds itself further out in Z space. Those rose lips coming down like this. And then you have a re recession coming back here and then a change coming back to here. Not the exact same as Aurora, but, but somewhat close. Okay, so this is what we want to avoid is this uh, sort of flatness here. We want to so we're going to have a little bit of a direction change here and then a more graceful nose. We want the lips to be a little bit higher up and to feel less like they're being tugged outward. So the way the lips come into the chin is important. So instead of having it feel like it, the lips are a shelf sitting above the chin, we want the, the lip to change direction slightly and then come back outward into the chin. So you see how this is more of a graceful uh, lower lip than that is. So the uh, profile is super important to get right, but the three-quarter is really the most important part. If you can get that three-quarter right, it's really what you're looking for. So going from this to this I think is going to be really helpful because it, you get more of a feminine beauty to it. So I hope these ideas are, are helpful for you, Travis. Uh, this model is, uh, is all yours now. It's coming your way soon. I don't recommend holding exactly to this layout. I didn't pay... Too much attention to the layout there are things to solve still but we're mostly focusing on on the the look the shaping of it but uh so thanks for joining us here at 3d appeal blog and uh for the more details about exactly how to execute this kind of thing you can join us over with classes over at animschool.com and this is dave gallagher and i'll talk to you later